Thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to uh, share a little bit about the Society for Astronomical Sciences. Now, first, how many of you use as your primary telescope uh, an instrument that is smaller than about one and a half meters? Okay, so you are my target audience here. This I'm at the right place. Um, we, I'm preaching to the choir when uh, uh, I remind you that there are research projects appropriate for all types of telescopes, and any telescope could make a contribution to some sort of research project. The people who use the large telescopes up there on the mountaintop, professional astronomers, graduate education, they have uh, funding agencies, they have professional societies to make sure that they understand what projects make sense, how to do them, what instrumentation is required, how to get them published. So they're well taken care of. Those of us who use smaller telescopes are in a little bit of a different situation. Where do you find out what to do and how to do it? because there is a wide array of, of research activities that can take advantage of the unique capabilities of the small telescope. Uh, college instruments, college observatories, backyard uh, instruments, the kind that you toss into the trunk of your car and go somewhere to a dark site. These are things that require long observing runs. Maybe you need to keep a target under observation for every night for a week or a month. Um, targets that are so bright that they'll saturate the instrumentation on those big telescopes. Uh, targets that require 24 hours uh, uh, on the target, which means you need a worldwide collaboration of instruments so that you don't have uh, diurnal gaps. Uh, uh, projects where portability is a premium, like occultations. And projects where the probability of success or the probability of even seeing something is so low that you'll never get time on a large telescope. Those kind of projects are perfect for small instruments. And, and the kind of things that fall into those sweet spots, uh, photometric study of asteroids, rotational light curves, uh, phase curves to learn a little about surface textures, uh, occultations to determine the absolute size, that's right in the sweet spot for small telescopes. And, and this kind of work has pretty much uh, been delegated entirely to the backyard and college observatory researchers. Um, eclipsing binaries, times of minimum light, again, largely delegated to the small telescope observer. Uh, cataclysmic variable stars, perfect example of the sort of a thing where you need continuous 24-hour surveillance for weeks on end to understand what's going on between the donor star and the acceptor star and the accretion disk and all of the dynamics that that entails. Uh, we're hearing a lot about double stars, that's why we're here. Uh, some of the premier astro imagers, renowned for their beautiful pictures, have participated in research projects studying uh, dwarf galaxies, tidal tails, the halos around great spirals, because they are expert at making deep, precise images, and more important, they can be profligate with their telescope time they don't have to worry about a time allocation committee. They own the instrument. Uh, and the kinds of, of instrumentation is done, a lot of this obviously is CCD photometry because that's become such a ubiquitous capability in uh, amateur astronomy. Uh, but spectroscopy, uh, video systems, polarimetry, uh, and very fast photometry. I've seen papers on all of those, uh, using all of those capabilities in the last few years. So the target audience for that kind of research is a lot of people like you, independent researchers who are operating out of their backyard for fun and enjoyment, uh, educators and their students, and professionals collaborating with amateurs. The purpose of the SAS is to help these people succeed in their projects. And by succeed, I mean more than just get the project done. Uh, it includes discovering the appropriate role for the small telescope and the uh, student or amateur researcher. Uh, figure out what projects make sense with the equipment that's readily available to you. Gain uh, skill and confidence in how to, how to do the project, how to reduce the data, how to interpret your results. Meet with other people 
so that you can learn from their successes and pitfalls and ensure that the, the results get published. There are some specialized journals like JDSO, uh, the Minor Planet Bulletin, the Journal of the American Association of Variable Star Observers, where, where things like this is published. But there's a surprising number of really interesting research projects that just don't fit into the, the market for those journals. And, and as somebody pointed out this morning, if it doesn't get published, it will perish. And, and this is, by and large, data and results that need to get into the literature for a variety of uses. So the role of the SAS is to, to create a small telescope science community. Um, SAS has been around for 31 years, but hasn't been very well advertised. I think, I think Russ, you were present at the creation of one of the heritage organizations, weren't you? Back, back in the day. Um, the the uh, SAS provides a, a forum for education for uh, people who are maybe interested, maybe curious, maybe just wonder whether doing some research projects uh, as an independent researcher or in collaboration with a, a professional astronomer or a, or a professor is something they're interested in. Uh, we provide a community to share results share successes, share failures, uh, work together to figure out how to make these projects succeed. By bringing professional and amateur astronomers together, uh, we facilitate pro-am collaboration, uh, introduce the professors uh, and the professional astronomers to amateurs or students who might be able to provide the data that they need, and provide a venue for publication. Um, the, uh, the main annual physical gathering of SAS is our symposium held in May every year at Big Bear, California. Uh, three days, two days are devoted to research presentations, uh, poster papers, and product displays. Uh, there's usually a handful of uh, manufacturers and vendors who bring some of their new products, some of their experimental products, so that we can see, talk to them, understand what the capabilities are. And usually they're selling uh, with a nice discount to the participants. The um, uh, total population uh, membership of SAS is about 150 people now. Most of them in uh, USA, but uh, quite a handful from Canada, uh, a few from South America, a few in Europe, a few in uh, Africa, and uh, a handful in uh, the Pacific region. So it's, it really is a, a worldwide organization. And uh, we're uh, delighted that you know, typically between 100 to 150 people show up at Big Bear uh, for, uh, for the conference. Uh, the, the first of the three days of each year's conference is devoted to educational workshops. Two workshops, half a day each, so that uh, the participants have an opportunity to get pretty deep uh, into a uh, subject area. In the last few years, uh, we've covered uh, the design and operation of rem remote and robotic observatories. Uh, the modeling and analysis of eclipsing binary stars, small telescope spectroscopy. Uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, small telescope spectroscopy going on in Europe. Interestingly, not so much in the U.S. Uh, this year's uh, workshops will be um, photometry with DSLR cameras which might be of interest to those of you who are working with students who don't have uh, CCDs and, and large telescopes. Amazingly, there are quite a few really interesting projects that can be done with a, a normal DSLR and nothing else. Uh, and a, um, a half-day workshop on observatory infrastructure and lightning protection. The um, uh, presentations of research projects are uh, recorded the, pretty much the same way that we're recording this conference. And those videos are available at the SAS website, free for viewing and download to anybody who's interested. Uh, naturally, uh, you need to have the information in these reports published. So the proceedings are published every year. Uh, they're indexed in ADS uh, as a peer-reviewed uh, conference. And they, too, are available 
Thank you, Bobby. Uh, they too are available on the SAS website, free for download. So you ask, if I can get the videos free for download, if I can get the proceedings free for download, why would I ever bother going to the symposium? Why would I bother joining SAS? Uh, a couple of reasons. As somebody this morning pointed out, at most conferences, the really interesting and really important activities are done in the hallway and in the bar. If you don't attend, you miss out on that. The other thing is that uh, every year we have a few presentations by professional astronomers uh, giving us some uh, work in progress reports, hasn't been published, or it's still under embargo. Really interesting stuff. It obviously doesn't show up in the videos or the proceedings. You have to be there to take advantage of that. Um, there's a, uh, we try to maintain contact with the community throughout the year through our newsletter. Um, there are a stack of them in the uh, lobby out here. Please grab one and take it with you. And there are also uh, SAS brochures available uh, for you to take with you, uh, get a little more background on the organization and contact information so that uh, hopefully we can uh, work together in the future. How can you take advantage of uh, the Society for Astronomical Sciences? Uh, submit papers. Uh, or if uh, uh, poster papers, if you're not ready to get up and, uh, and stand in front of the podium. Uh, if you have a poster paper that you would like to present but you can't be there personally, um, give me a call. Uh, as one of the trustees, I can make sure that it gets there. Um, I'm also the stucky to pull the newsletter together every quarter, and I'm always looking for news notes, uh, project ideas, things that you've been doing, send me an email. And take advantage of uh, the resources that SAS has to offer, both as a community uh, and as a website. The symposium, proceedings, videos. Uh, the workshop videos are not posted on the website uh, because of the arrangement that we have with the uh, people who present them, but you could purchase DVDs if one of those topics uh, is of interest to you. Uh, $50 per workshop, uh, give me a ring. Um, and if I haven't convinced you yet to at least consider participating in uh, uh, the SAS workshop, let's talk about where it is. Okay, you're here on Maui. A lot of you have come from the left or right side of that picture. Uh, the SAS uh, Symposium is held in Big Bear, California, about an hour and a half drive east of Los Angeles. If you're going to have a hard time discussing why am I going to another astronomy session with your spouse or your kids, remind them what's in Los Angeles. While you're up at Big Bear learning about astronomy, there might be other things that they would like to participate in that would be more interesting to them. So uh, thank you for your kind attention. I hope to see some of you up at uh, Big Bear and uh, taking advantage of the uh, SAS. Thank you.